TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. Get you to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, if you look up here, this is where any of the lives will go. Any of the key moments or, you know, litness and now. Haven't been live in a minute, though, so can't even lie to you. Don't forget, we do got the Discord, and we do got the Patreon as well. And that's where we react to stuff that we can't react to on YouTube. Uh, and we just started Fresh Meat. The brand new Fresh Meat first episode, not first episode, I did one episode. The second episode is dropping in one hour and 14 minutes. Um, so probably like... From, from when y'all see this, it probably already dropped. <laughs> uh, y'all can go be on there for the lowest tier, man. Don't forget to check out the link in the description for my link tree is where all my socials are out. And the GoFundMe is back up to get me to the UK, man. Got a lot of motion on TikTok, man. And, and you know, good things are in motion, man. I appreciate any of the support. Even if you drop one sterling pound in there. It all helps. You feel me? Uh, oh, yeah. My job hunt is doing okay. You know what? I'm going to drop a, a video for my life update after this. Hold on. All right. Let's get into this police interceptor, though. Season 21, episode 12. I don't think I did this one. Let's get into it. <laughs> come to the door. You come to no harm. Longest intro in the game currently. New work on Trent. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a new episode. I ain't never seen that um, location. It's the early hours, and Coops is a few miles from Britain's longest road. Anyone on the A1? What is it? Three people have just caught the curtain to the uh, lorry, and have run off over a field. Wait, what? Three people have just caught the curtain to the uh, lorry, and have run off over a field. Yeah, I see this episode? We'll Curtain siding, when villains slash the sides of lorries to steal their content, contributed to a cargo crime wave that cost the UK ninety-five million pounds in recent years. I had a call in from. Uh, I suspect the lorry driver is part of a lay bar on the A1. He's noticed that there's someone cut the curtain sides of his lorry, um, and they've ran off into fields. So uh, it's definitely something. Um, we're interested in. Curtain ciders most frequently steal fuel or tobacco, but they're opportunists who'll take what they can get. Probably pot luck to them, they'll literally try for anything. Delta 5 1, I'm just on the A1 now, chopping northbound. Coops is a formidable force, a taser trained advanced driver in a 150 mile an hour Skoda with police dog Rambo in the boot for good measure. Bravo, bravo. And the pair touch down to find the lorry driver waiting for them. Oh, hello. Hey, geez. Oh. Hello, you OK? Hello. If you want to see this land, but be careful. I don't know. Here it is. Sure, yeah. yeah. He suspects the man who slashed his lorry fled through the adjacent field. What have they got? What are they? You see, like the, I, I've never seen a truck, a, a, a lorry, in the in America with um, with the with the like, without a metal thing over it, nothing that you could just slice. Like, hell no, nah, we're not doing that. They don't do that in America. You gotta you gotta really be able to get in there. You gotta have some stuff to get in there, not just a cloth. They take anything? No, this. Half pallet from here. Peanut oil. And uh, take uh, here. We was just trying to see what was in there. Anything valuable? Peanut oil? Now nah, we're going to move along. And more peanut oil. 
Not exactly the Brinks mat job. Cool. But theft all the same. If you wait here, I've got a dog. Okay. So you... <laughs> okay. And we're going to go that way. Okay. Quite an obvious pet place where they've gone through that hedge. So we're going to go try and pick a track up. Rambo straight through the hedge. Rambo kind of big, ain't he? Come here. Come here, wait. Wait. But there's a lot of field in which to flee. Track on. And not a sniff of a scent. They're not going through it, have they? Come on. Looks like the curtain siders may have used a different escape route. That was far one edge. There's literally no track in this field where we've uh, we've been pointed to by the lorry driver. The dog's got nothing. The trails run cold. There's no track to pick up of where anyone's been walking um, at all. And the curtain siders have left over a grand's worth of damage in their wake. This is going to be expensive to replace as well, and there's more, there's more to it than just the product. So they spilt the oil down there, look, if you can see. Uh, they've, they've put the knife in and cut the oil. But these will be well on the way now. We've loaded... Well, if you don't put a patch on that piece of curtain, <laughs> you can go get you a blackout curtain from Aldi or something and, and have your grandma stitch that together. You good. That is not expensive to repair. Peanut oil. This isn't me and monkey business. You can literally stitch that back together. Like... When you're a kid, 40 is such a far... I'm not downplaying the crime, but, like, come on now. In 2020, there were 12 cargo thefts every 24 hours. That's 5-2 receiving 5-1. And though the peanut posse have given cops the slip, they may not be the only gang at work tonight. We have a report of a cloned... Um, Mercedes Sprinter van. They reckon it's linked to curtain side and lorries. Derbyshire and Leicestershire forces are also looking for the suspect van. We've got the whole motorway network covered. We're just waiting for it to be sighted now, and then three police forces are going to descend. They're familiar with the MO of gangs like these. These offenders um, have had numerous jobs on the motorway. Not necessarily always the same people. But we know that they've, in the past, they've ran across all lanes of the motorway to avoid capture. To stop the van safely, nothing's been left to chance. Is it worth call into highways and maybe get to uh, low speed limit down to your 50 miles an hour? It's a team effort, but that doesn't mean knots don't want the winning goal. Derbyshire just fixed it up. Oh, Derbyshire got it. Derbyshire police are behind this vehicle. One mile away from us. Should be coming past any minute. There it is. We're on. The van's gone past. With Derbyshire in its slipstream and Coops coming up fast for knots. They're from the team up, on it? Delta 5 1, I am behind the Mark Derbyshire unit. unit to let it run all the way to 28. Highways make their contribution. Killing the speed limit. As traffic slows, Derbyshire... Okay. Wait a minute. Speed limit. This is something I have never seen in my life. I didn't even realize y'all did this in the UK. Post the speed limits are electronic and somebody can control them when like something's going on on the highway. I'm not even gonna lie, that's elite. The UK is so far advanced, it, 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 it's so far in front of us in certain aspects that it don't even make sense. Like the simplest stuff, the simplest things y'all are eons ahead of us in. Or at least, at least that I ever seen. Like that's tough. As traffic slows, Derbyshire and Knotts drivers prepare to box in the van using tactical pursuit and containment. This is like everything has a purpose. Nothing is useless. Coops lets two marked cars through. It's countdown marker one But ideally, they need another. 
just confirmed we've only got three T-Pack vehicles. Yeah, that confirms vehicle four, unmarked stock vehicle, knocked T-Pack train. Before another T Pack train driver can join the stick, T Pack train, bro, just pull up behind him. <laughs> the target leaves. Oh, the moving T Pack, though. This is a moving T. Yeah. The motorway. Oh, oh, oh. They're out of there. The suspected curtain siders may have spotted the marked cars. Taking the second, the second. Yeah. Road, one door. He's going. He's back on the motorway. Any chance to finger ahead, uh, With his toe down. And a stinger isn't an option. Highways have dropped the limit to 40, but Van Man's taking no notice. I ain't even gonna lie, that's, that's like I understand why the Americans don't do that. That's a lot of money of the taxpayer's dollar to put that up there, but that's effective. That was probably stopped tons of accidents. I think they want the box on it ASAP, so it could get very interesting up ahead. Before the pursuing pack can make its move, the van leads them off the motorway again. He's going, guess that red we're on. A red light turns to green at just the wrong moment. <sighs> They're convinced now that the driver's trying to escape and they need a fourth T pack unit sharpish. Okay. Are their lights not on yet though? No, no. Enter Rob Ely and Ian Coleman. He was lane two a second ago. The van's heading straight for them. Here he comes. And there he goes. I'm not even gonna lie to you. He looked like he was going a smooth 30. Respectable speed limit. Let me see. Game on. More than stick now. Uh... Why are there lights or anything not on? I always get confused at this. Like, is it edited that the lights aren't on or the sound? Four KRVs join. Time to make themselves known. They've been following this man for 15, 20 minutes and just now lit him up. Like at this point, yeah, I didn't know y'all was behind me. I ain't see no lights. I ain't hear no sirens. I wasn't running. Pull right on over. <laughs> Even if I was running, I, at this point, I ain't hear it. <laughs> the band's not stopping for blues. Okay, now, yeah, so now you know they're running for sure. For sure. Coops thinks it's making for the exit slip road and potential carnage with oncoming traffic. Don't let it go. Do not let it go. A marked car makes a move. Tactical contact, but it spun the van onto the exit slip. Facing motorway traffic. Tactical contact. They need to stop him now. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. La Roche-Posay Amphilio sunscreen visibly reduces the appearance. I ain't gonna lie, this is intense. I'm on the edge of my seat today. <laughs> Police interceptors always be making my day better. I don't know what it is about this show, man. Interceptors are knee deep in a night of curtain cider thefts from lorries. They spilled the oil down there, though, if you can see it. Put the knife in and cut the oil. But these will be well on the way now. One gang's given them the slip. It's gonna go the wrong way down the motorway. But a runaway van may be linked with a second. Don't let it go. Do not let it go. After tactical contact, the van's facing M. Don't lie, you hit that man hard too. One traffic and motorway carnage is just a slip road away. So a, a police police cars in America they got the they got the gate on the front of their cars to kind of protect them 
There's no gates on these cars, so it's all car they hitting. Like, you know what I'm talking about? The gates, like the metal bars across the metal reinforcement. They got those on all the police cars, basically. So, uh, like, the, so like that impact right there. To a carnage is just a slip road away. Do it, yeah, right, do it, do it, do it. The it wouldn't the, the the hood of the car wouldn't have took that much impact. Direct hit, Rob. They're on them like truckers on Yorkies. And Coops and Rambo make sure no one makes a run for it. Watch your map. Driver and passenger are in cuffs and none too happy. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy either if I got caught low key. They got a van full of product that look like too. Well, it's that wrong, do we not wrong? Not on me. Relax, mate. Just relax, you'll be all right, pal. All right. All right. Morning for that wrong. What's your next Relax. I'm resisting, I won't. I am coming out of the door, almost for you. Relax, Spur. You see what I'm talking about? How the front of the car is tore down? Like, yeah, it would have been a little impact, but it, it, it wouldn't have been like this. The the gate of the the metal gate would have took most of it. I think it's like I think it's like attached to the frame of the car. So it wouldn't even have been that much damage. Relax. I'm resisting, I won't. I am coming out of the door almost for you. Relax yourself, mate. Fight. What put me from? Mate, you shouldn't be stealing, should you? You're a thief, so that's unfortunate. Look after yourself. <laughs> so what's in the back of the van, Coops? What isn't in here? We have got some electric golf carts. Probably a couple of grand a piece. One, two, three, ten or twelve of them. Yeah. Russell Hobbs steam cleaners. All brand new in the boxing, in the boxes still. I don't know if uh, over there was going to be playing golf later this morning, but he'll not be walking the fairways today, unfortunately. But Rob might be walking home. He was looking to go the wrong way down the M1. He's going in one way, so unfortunately, sometimes we've got to sacrifice the vehicle to, to prevent the pursuit from carrying on because it's got just so dangerous. The pair stopped by a double tactical contact were not connected with the peanut oil theft earlier in the evening. They are, however, under investigation for theft of a motor and the goods worth thousands of pounds. For driving without a license, no insurance and dangerous driving, he was banned from driving for three years and sentenced to 14 months behind bars. Mercifully, no one was harmed in the incident. These cops have put their own safety on the line and done a cracking job. And you've got a young boy and a driver moaning They'll probably never drive that car again. That's crazy, right? They probably repair those cars and just give them up. There's a lot of ex-police cars. There's like a lot, like in America, they like, once the police cars retire, they send them to a lot or they sell them or, you know what I'm saying, take all the police equipment out, put the stuff, the regular equipment back into it. And they, they sell them, basically. Mm -hmm. Because they've been dealt with very busly when they're potentially just about to go and join the M1 the wrong way. So, as the saying goes, if you play with feathers... You're going to get tickled. <laughs> Three of you lot know who I am, yeah? And not one of you in one... I've, I've never met you before in my life. Not every incident the interceptors attend is straightforward. Stay where you are, all of you stay where you are. Keep your hands where I can see him. It's vital to get a handle on what's going on quickly. Yeah, there's no one out on the street at all. Lee, it's that. Stake zero, stake zero. Everyone down here, please. Especially when firearms are involved. You know exactly as I say. Five two, this chunk. I wonder what's the percentage of like how many times they had to fire them, them things. It's early evening, and the firearms squad are descending on the suburbs at speed and in numbers. We've just taken two telephone calls from two independent witnesses that have stated there's been a fight in a suburb in Oxen called Broxstone, and that there's been a black male who's been seen to fire basically bullets, fire a gun to this group as they've been running up the street in Broxstone. 
In the dog van behind, Jen Else and Quantum are tailing Jim and Dan to the scene. It's all a bit confusing, but a male has turned up and started firing a gun. Intel is sketchy and constantly updating. Down to 2 2 this channel. One report claims a silver car sped from the scene, potentially containing a firearm. A silver car has flashed past. But as they pull a Yui, new reports come in of potential suspects in the opposite direction. Back away we've come. At this point, you got to choose what's more important, right? Defenders are there. A second group, Yui. Keep going. The information is changing now all the time. It's really happening real quick. All the information is being spun in the control room. They're chasing intel across the borough. There's some information to say that, that there was a silver car that had made off, and that's... ...subsequently now disappeared. But we've had some information say that the offenders are in an address not far from uh, where the initial calls have come in. Jim and Dan's X5 and Jen's dog van arrive on scene to find a suspect in the sights of Paul Charlesworth and other firearms cops. In just 36 weeks, Universal Tech... It was not the time for that, you feel me? He's uncooperative and it's unclear if he's involved. What's your name? I'm not telling you my name. Jim appraises the situation and takes charge. Listen, mate. Listen to me now and do exactly as you're told. Lady, lady, go inside the house. Listen to me. You need to do exactly as you're told now. You need to do exactly as you're told. Oi! Get back inside! Fella! Coop, shut him up. A man's bellowed through a downstairs window and the lad on the drive won't play ball. It's hard to know what's going on and tension's high. Fella! You <laughs> just told Coop to shut the dog up? Like the dog just gonna stop barking? That's like somebody telling you to shut him up. To shut you up. That's a that's a that's a police officer you disrespecting like that. You need to apologize to that dog like that. Listen to me. Listen to me. Steep, keep calm and do exactly as you're told. Come forward to me now. Come forward to me now. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. I'm yeah, go on. Listen to me. You start doing as I tell you. Taser and cuffs. Listen to me. Start doing as you're told, okay. told and you'll come to no harm. Chaos incoming. Listen, listen. Damn! Hold on, chill, bro. You're right, though. <laughs> In America, you would have been hit with a mace bomb or something. You'll come to no harm. Chaos incoming. Listen, listen. Hey, back up! You back up! Get to the chief back! Fuck now! Arriving from behind the car, fresh from the bath, the guy who shouted from the window attacks the suspect and is restrained. Don't you Cops grab their chance and wrestle the suspect to the floor. Don't you again! Get the floor. Get the floor. Meanwhile, grab their chance and wrestle the suspect to the floor. Don't. His knee. His knee is directly somewhere that the sun does not shine. And I know that looks that's painful right there. I call that a knee butt. But me! My bad. Oh, again. Get up, get up, get up. Meanwhile, Bath Guy I'm not messing with you, Ethan. claims the man assaulted his daughter earlier. Right, what the? I'm in the bath. Can you see what's happening here? Our police. Can you see? Really? Really, man? Yeah, really. Stay there. I'm not resisting. Stay there. Right, stay where you are. You don't know no, no, you listen to me. You stay where you are. No struggle, okay? I told you I've not got a weapon. Get some, get some cuffs on. 
I'm not resisting. No, no, no. Relax. Right, so you don't need to be aggressive. No, no. Relax, relax then. This is not America. I'm not going to resist you guys. Okay. Hey, sir, you don't have to... <laughs> He said, you don't have to be that aggressive. This is, I'm not aggressive. This is not a, he right though. I ain't even gonna lie to you. You lucky, his spinal, his knee to, his knee is in the proper place. Cause in America to be somewhere else. Jim's worked up about the Allegedly. man piling into a knife edge firearms op. Right in the middle of it, mate. We've got a duty of care to protect you, and you come charging out here like an idiot. Yeah, because she's the top you boy. You absolute idiot. Again. Absolute idiot. What do you mean, absolute idiot? It's pandemonium, and to confuse things further, an acquaintance of the suspect on the floor has rolled up. <laughs> Listen, put your hands on your head. Put your hands. Put your hands on your head. Put your hands on your head. Stay with him. Stay with him. Stay where you are. It do be like, like a little weird though, man. Like I ain't never seen on this show like a cop that looked like me. Maybe once. Like in passing though, like I, like I. See that right there, as an American, that'll put a little fear in me if I pull up and something's going on and no cop look like me. Like, ah, man, now you know what? At that point, anyway, I'm complying anyway. I don't, <laughs> hey, listen, I don't know what kind of day you having at home. I don't know what's going on in your past. I don't know who made you mad or made you mad. It's, hey, listen, man. It's hard being a cop, I would assume, man. It's hard mentally being a cop because it's really, I bet you it's super difficult to s separate your, your, what's going on in your life from your job. Like, they have to always intertwine. Like, like at some point, hey, man, I'm mad as hell. I'm going to go to work and just <laughs> not de escalate at all. Put your hand to now. Middle of your back. Middle. Not saying that this is the case in this situation, but I'm just like, you know, I'm just speaking as, as for a whole. We'll tell you in a minute, mate. There's nothing to suggest the new police is involved in either incident, but Dan's taking no chances. Something's obviously gone off tonight. We'll find out what's going on, yeah? Find it out. If we find out you're not involved, you'll be out on your way, yeah? Please do. Where have you come from? Oh, just up the road. I was, I was, I don't know, I was with him. You was with him, okay. I'm a bad boy, you know. Clarity is in short supply, but both men are adamant they weren't involved in the alleged shooting. Oh, no, he didn't have a Come gun. Come this way. He did not have a gun. Come this way. Oh. Boss, please. <laughs> You make, you make it look 10 times worse yourself. No, I don't care, because it's domestic. It's beginning to look like the two suspects in cuffs were not connected with the firearms incident. Firearms? Where you see the firearms? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> firearms, where you see the firearms? Man? But something's gone down and the cops need to know what. So as we've turned up, yeah. male arguing with the female at this address on the front and he's been non-cooperative for us. Yeah. Then, dad has come out of the address and just started having a pop at him. So we've had to get involved in that sure. and basically detained him having a bit of a bit of a rumble with them. The men in cuffs are no longer suspected of being involved in the firearms incident, but the one wrestled to the floor is now suspected of an earlier assault. The information from the very outset was about people shooting at people on the street. We've then got information that the offenders are making off in a silver car as well. So we pass the silver car, so we turn around and go after that. You pass the silver car and now you're at a domestic violence situation from a shootout in the middle of the street to a domestic violence, I don't know. Okay. Then the information keeps being drip fed to us that no, 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 the offenders are at this address. So we, we then forget that car, prioritize what's happening here. Just unfolded real quick. We've potentially got an armed subject wrestling with a unarmed male on the front of the premise. So we've had to basically get hands on these people before anybody got hurt. Nothing was found to connect any of the suspects with the alleged shooting no further action was taken against the man who arrived late to the party or the dad who jumped out of the bath into a loaded standoff. The man
man wrestled to the floor was found guilty of assault. He was ordered to pay £300 costs, a £34 victim surcharge and was sentenced to five months in prison, suspended for a year. Five months in prison? Coming up, come a death and cut! What a suspended year sentence? It's... Damn, it's tough. They say a leopard never changes its spots. The knife crime team say a dealer never changes his trade. Most of the people we we stop, search and arrest for drug drug supply offences, they've they've normally been caught before, haven't they? When they do get caught, if they lose a lot of drugs or a lot of cash, those people they're working for will will put them in a debt, will debt them up, and they have to. I always would think, man. Like, it's police. So let me let me try to break this down, man. Police, police. I'm talking about America right now. Police in America should police neighborhoods that they from, or they're very, 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 very familiar with. Naturally, you know what I'm saying. So, so if you're from a neighborhood, I'm gonna give you like an example in America. I'm gonna tell. You, I'm gonna describe the neighborhood to you and everything. If you from like Naperville and, and you grow up and you want to be a police officer, so be it, so be it, so be it. But if once you graduate and you go be a police officer, Naperville is very, very posh. It's an upscale, outstanding, it's trouble there, but it's not like, you know, like South Side Chicago trouble. So, like, if you grow up and you want to be a cop, and then you grew up in Naperville, you've never really been outside of Naperville. You, you only used to Naperville things, and you go and you take your police cop. You, you take your police, uh, your police talents, and you want to be a cop in South Side Chicago in the hundreds. You're not used to that, like, thinking logically, you're not used to that type of aggression. R correct? Right or wrong? You're not used to that type of aggression. So everything is going to put a little fear in you. Everything is going to put fear in you. Even if I raise my voice, even if I talk regularly, but I have a deeper voice, even if I raise my voice a little bit, even my body stance, even, you know what I'm saying, like, it's certain thing. If I see a cop, if I'm if I'm assigning, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I want to be CPD, Chicago Police Department, but I'm from Naperville, whatever. That's a suburb of Chicago. Okay, you could be CPD, but you going downtown. You're going to be CPD by Wrigleyville in Boys Town or something. You're going to be somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like now if you grew up in Naperville and you was always in the city, always down to, if you was always out south and you was in cool, you have a familiar familiarity to it. You understand what's going with the movements of people. You understand how people, you know what I'm saying? I think that would like I know that's easier said than done. Way easier said than done, but might man, it might be something that to look into, man. It might be, you can't be from rural South Illinois, Southern Illinois, and then come be a city cop. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, why would you, hey. To work, selling the drugs again to pay it off. Rural South Illinois is the country. Like, country, there's no nothing. <laughs> Nottingham. Parked up near the city centre, Ken Tinley and Joe Riley have spotted a familiar car. Yeah, Chrissy, thank you. Not sure why he's knocking around here, though. No, exactly. It's a fair way from its registered address and has triggered their collective spidey sense. This Golf here is a car we've had before. It's linked to a lad that we've arrested for drug supply. Only had a knife in the back. So he's definitely one that we know. 
The golf is registered to a lad. Ugh, beautiful. Nicked just six months earlier. He's been arrested for possession with intent to supply, and we've also uncovered a knife now as well. They want to be sure he's... Then he didn't do on the push ice, the... Chill out. As well. They want to be sure he's not up to his old tricks. How are you doing, buddy? All right? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah. My mate behind me thinks he think recognises it. Ken recognises something else. Reeks of weed in there, buddy. Got any cannabis in here? After nine years on the force, he's learned that if it smells iffy, it usually is. I can smell cannabis. We'll search it. Anything in the car that shouldn't be? No. Right, I'm going to give you a search. Anything's going to hurt me or you? No, no. OK. You keeping out of trouble, then? Yeah. A little bit. Got a bit of weed there. All right, we'll have to deal with that. Doesn't mean you're going to get arrested or anything, assuming there's, any, there's nothing more in the car. If there is any more in the car, then the man to find it is Gav. See what's in there is. The interceptor is a regular bloodhound who could give a snipper dog a run for its money. I think there's something in your car, buddy. You're under arrest, but all right. We obviously found some drugs concealed, mate. Let's put your hands behind your back. Multiple bags of weed, enough to potentially charge him for dealing again. Take a seat, dude bag of cannabis sort of on display in the car so when cops search it they'll see it and think we've got his weed but then when you look a bit further into it you can see that these concealed lens cannabis behind the, the little compartment almost behind this air vent here i knew there was going to be something in there as you could just tell uh thankfully we've got gav on the case and he, he, he'll, he'll find it without any shadow of doubt so uh yeah He's back in custody again for another drug supply offence and we'll see what uh, the additional searches bring. The familiar face is off to the nick. Meanwhile, Ken and Joe are off to his girlfriend's property where cops know he can usually be found. He's given an address, which is not the one we're going to. But the one we're going to is where we always see that car parked up. So that's where he's going to be spending his time. <clears throat> the inspector's happy with that <clears throat> rationale and has authorised the, uh, the, the the search to take place there. All they have to do is get in. So there's a key on the same ring with the car key. So, and that car's always outside that address. So you'd like to think that this key is going to fit that door. The new Lipman Tornado Spin Mop. Fill it, spin it, and mop it like it's hot. Mop it like it's hot is crazy. That's, that's, y'all moving, y'all moving way too, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mop it like it's hot! Am 20 minutes left? I've been talking too much in this episode. Sure enough, the key fits. Hello? Hello? Hiya. Hello, it's the police. Hello. Hello, can we come in a second, have a chat? He's not here at the minute. No, exactly. No. He's with us. Pardon? He's with us. What do you mean? He's been He's arrested. He's been arrested. What? Can you not... Can, I don't know. Can you come yeah. back, please? Man? No, That's all we I'm can't, unfortunately. Now. We've got all sorts of search the address. Well, can I see your warrant, okay. please? It's not a warrant. It's because he's in custody. It's a Section well, 18 search warrant. warrant. Because I know my right. As he's in... This is not America. Custody, they don't need a warrant for a Section 18 search. Unfortunately, we will be coming in and searching the address, OK? Right, so can you go and okay. get a warrant first, please? And can you we, wait we've got authority from the inspector in custody. Yeah, we don't need a warrant. With the woman inside finally accepting the inevitable, they begin the search. I'll go in the back. Oh, yes. Bingo. And it doesn't take long to find something nasty in the bedroom. I mean, this is quite a nasty looking sort of weapon, some sort of tomahawk. Followed by a large wedge of cash. Cash. And a load more weed. Some of the cannabis seized from the car was in the same tubs as these. Some of the cannabis seized from the car was in the same packaging as this, which is quite unique. I've not seen this packaging before. Well, it's clear that you haven't seen this packaging before. Ain't that the airtight soup 
packages. That's very common. He's obviously doing the packaging himself. The plastic is the kind sealed by heat and they suspect they've found the source. So he just puts it on the floor and irons it and managed to burn the carpet seam in the bags. Yeah. <laughs> if you can keep the air away from the cannabis, it will last longer. So clearly what he's been doing is he's been Alpha kilo ironing the bag the uh, on the carpet, on his bedroom carpet, to seal it, eight, but six, probably burnt his Bravo, carpet whilst yeah. he's been doing it. No further action was taken against the suspect arrested in the Gulf regarding the weed in his car or anything found in Shea carpet burn. He was, however, found guilty for previous offences of possession with intent to supply and possession of a bladed article. He was ordered to pay £149 victim surcharge, forfeited just over £1,800 and was sent to prison for 12 months. Hey. It's a dark winter afternoon. Ken's back on patrol, this time with Matt, and they're responding to a shout from fellow interceptors in Radford. Well, they're pale into Birkin, then. Colleagues have just been behind a vehicle because the driver's on his phone, and then the next minute he's throwing a, a carrier bag out the window. The vehicle's made off at speed. What car is it? Not sure. The make of the car being pursued is a mystery. We're paling. But odds are, it's this fiesta on the pavement. What the? It's a crazy manoeuvre. Ken tries to pin the pavement mounter, but he's away. How does that even... How did he just escape that? Ooh. All you have to do is pull up a little more. Ken gets his toe down in pursuit. And whatever street that was, it looked like Baltimore, Maryland. Like a vehicle failed to stop Gregory Boulevard. Baltimore Blue Fiesta. Just trying to uh, catch up. Temporary loss. Probably Birkin Avenue towards Cree. Baltimore. Uh, Craven Road. It is. Initial pursuit train. Suitable vehicle. Sightings of the Fiesta are fleeting. Straight up. Straight up. Being directed Craven Road towards Bobber's Mill. And try as they might. Temporary loss, Craven Road towards Bobber's Mill. Uh, left, I reckon. They can't quite lock on to the runaway. We've got no direction of travel on Bobber's Mill. But anyone prepared to do this? At school home time, in a family area, needs locking up. Bobber's Mill, Let's try we've lost it. That dead end yeah, in the Craven. Luckily, the locals are on the side of the interceptors. Members of the public have carried on pointing towards that junction. So I think it's gone to ground somewhere. There's a number of dead ends and uh, little alleyways to pull into. Sure enough, local knowledge... There we go. Has that got damage to it? ...has led them to the Fiesta. We've got it, side of the clock, public house, abandoned. The driver's lethal pavement dash left its mark, but his seatbelt was primed for a quick decamp and he's long gone. So that car was definitely stolen. This car's abandoned right next to a, a walkway that's going to lead down towards Bobber's Mill, and there'll be a number of left and right routes taking you either back to Craven or that next road down and towards Afton Road. Johnny and Tom are hunting the roads around the alleyway for the registered keeper of the Fiesta. I know we said it was linked to a particular individual. Get a photo out. They now have a photo of him, which fits the description of the driver who mounted the pavement. That is him. And they've spotted him. With him, Bob and Mel. Up there, mate. Oh, you're the rest of me. Just the wall. Against the wall now. For what? 
Yeah, mate, that's going to be him. I got a good look. We tried pinning it in against the wall, and I don't know how, but he managed to squeeze around the back of Ken. Passed us offside, offside. Got a really good look. That's going to be him. They've got him. Yeah, mate, in Indeed they have. And after they recover the bag, apparently tossed from the Fiesta, the driver may face more than driving offences. So... This is what's been discarded. Okay. This is, it looks to be around four ounces of cannabis in bulk. So naturally, I think we'd be leaning towards, is there an element of dealing or s supply involved? The cap oh, no, 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 no. That's for personal use. Personal use. It's not bagged up individually. You ain't find no scare. You ain't find no baggies. That's personal use. It's about three or four ounces. It's a good result unless you own a car parked along the suspect's getaway pavement. But it could have been far worse. He's mounted the kerb and he's driven the full length of this footpath, uh, which obviously fronts straight onto the properties. Anyone stepping outside of their door, it'll wipe them out. Um, so dangerous, so dangerous. And for what? He's got a bag of drugs in the car with him. Crazy. The driver who mounted the pavement received no further action for dangerous driving and failing to stop. However, he's currently under investigation for possession with intent to supply Class B drugs and remanded in custody while he awaits trial for unconnected offences. Do the amazing. Help save... Yeah, yeah. What is all? Kettle air fryer? Okay. As seen previously, cops face potentially deadly dilemmas on the roads. Cars on the pavement, or facing oncoming motorway traffic, call for split second decisions. And decision times approaching for interceptors John and Jules, who were second in the stick after a runaway driver. They decide to pass Lee Frith, and their unmarked Volvo takes the lead just as the runaway approaches a stinging unit. I'm just put my full of the stinger down here. Oh, he's got us. The stingers nibbled the unmarked, but its tyres are intact. I was just want to ask that question. How many stingers have hit police, actual cop police car? Oscar Tango 87, we'll take course and pursuit. We are Main Street Stirrup. The same can't be said for the bad guys. Near side front tyre is uh, deflating. After giving them the runaround and refusing to stop, he's running out of rubber and road. Simple, we're on a uh, narrow track. We're struggling to get past. Stand by. As Jules and John pull alongside, the driver slams it into reverse. He's in reverse, in reverse. He's rammed both cop cars and kept his foot down, so John batons his window. Taser! The driver's still trying to reverse. Taser! 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 But 50,000 volts takes the fight. Taser! But 50 right by that armpit and that uh got him right here that's tough thousand volts takes the fight out of him right did he just ask him why did he tase him ah. 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 he wanted to ask why you do that an H taser has been deployed. Can we have uh, some officer to it, please? The taser driver's out of action. But the passengers are making things difficult. Yeah, I got a seatbelt. And things are getting a bit spicy. Get on the floor! Get on the floor! You're in the back. There we are. Finally, everyone's nicked. And despite crazy driving like this, the only injury is to John, 
for his timely work with the baton. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I just cut my hand on the on the glass, smashing the window back. But it's thumbs up for a bloody good result. <laughs> No further action was taken against any of the passengers in the car that ran the cops. The taser driver, on the other hand, was charged with driving without insurance or a full licence, dangerous driving and being unfit to drive through cocaine. Having failed to attend court, is now a wanted man. You should have known he wasn't attending court. Coming up... If that's how you... When it comes to sniffing out dodgy drivers, nobody does it better than Phil the Nose Broughton. There's nobody does it better than Phil the Nose Broughton. Literally, Phil, you got a, you got that thing on you, don't you? Salute to Phil, man. That's a crazy nickname to have. Why am I getting a whiff of weed? Be honest with me. Uh, I did have a smell yesterday. Oh. Oh. He's smelling joints from the past. <laughs> Car stinks of it. Got on you. Phil homes in on everything from Class B's right. to BS. What's your first name? Ramon. You know, if you're going to be lying to the police, it turns a minor traffic offence into something more serious. In short, you can't hide the nose. His nose actually not even that big. It's just shaped like like it make it look like it's an obstacle illusion type nose. You know what I'm saying? It's mid morning. I don't know if he did that to get away from us or. And a scrap van ducking into residential streets has caught Phil's attention. Scrap man, you might not have a license. Only licensed traders can deal in scrap metal. I'll see what he's up to. Hey, up. How are you doing? All right. You knew I was going to spin and have a chat, didn't you? No. Is your vehicle? Yeah. Cool. All licensed up? Yeah, of course. When I say licensed, waste carriers? Yeah, everything. Cool. Are we yeah. out collecting scrap today then? Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Yeah. Why was that hanging off the end? Because it, it fell over. That's why I pulled right. it over to sort of start. Because it's, it's not strapped in. That's yeah. why, isn't it? Have you got your license everything on you? Yeah? I ain't got it. I ain't got it on me. Right. He's forgotten to bring his license. Have you been to the police before? I have. When was the last time? Ooh, about ten years ago now. All oh, right. Yes. Yeah, so nothing recent. No. Try and keep the nose clean now. No worries. It's the best way. So we've got insurance. Yeah. Right. And you got a full license. Yeah. Cool. No worries. Great, then you're not breaking any laws, though you might want to consider the laws of physics. You're relying on gravity. Gravity's not your friend at all. Right. You go over a bump, things bounce around. So unless you want to be up in front of the Crown Court because something's gone out the back yeah. through someone's windscreen, yeah, yeah. it's entirely up to you. But if that's how you're going to drive, then we'll take you off the road for being dangerous. Yeah. So if you get some towel pulling over it and strap it down, absolutely nothing's going I've to come some, out. I've got some straps. Yeah. Who are you insured with? Uh, we'll go compare the website, innit? Yeah. Who did you go with? I take it you've got all the uh, emails on your phone if need be. Not, not phone, not my phone. <laughs> I dropped, I lost it the other day. Leaving Phil busy doubting everything he says, Scrapman has a go at rearranging his load. Yeah, I'm strong. You just picked up a dryer. You currently going through court for anything? Uh, yeah. What's that for? For uh, driving. No worries. Step out for us. What is that? It's a pre-workout or something? I try to make commercials fun. <laughs> Out of uniform, Phil's a wizard on the PlayStation, but this guy's pushing all the wrong buttons. I'm just going to point something out to you. If you tell me anything that's misleading or false, can bump a minor road traffic offence into something more serious. Do you understand that? Yeah. OK, then. Yeah. Right. So the question I'm going to ask you is, do you currently hold a full UK driving licence? Yeah. Right. Great. Are you currently able to drive? 
Okay. And do you hold insurance for this vehicle? Yeah. Right. Okay. So why is it telling me then that Nottingham Magistrates Court have imposed an interim disqualification on you? And that was an interim dis driving disqualification because you're currently going through court for driving a motor vehicle. All right, aggravated vehicle taking or something? Yeah. yeah. So why are we driving? Well, shouldn't we drive it? Well, interim driving disqualification means you're disqualified from driving because you're currently going through the court process. So arguably, how can you have insurance on a vehicle? And not only that... I'm pretty sure the court told him that, though. But, hey, play dumb, though. This vehicle isn't insured to you. It's insured to somebody else. It should be. No, it's not. It should okay. be. Yeah, but it's not, is it? <laughs> I don't know, boss. Well, the thing is... It it I'm giving you the opportunity. Driving. You know you shouldn't be driving because you're currently going through court where you've been disqualified. I didn't know. So, I, I didn't know, honestly. But you know you're getting disqualified. But you know you're going through court for aggravated yeah. twerk. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. So it would have been explained to you on those court hearings through your solicitor and whatever you want it really. I never got told that I shouldn't be driving. As long right. as I won't be. No worries. Well, you're not supposed to be driving. So what's going to happen today is you're going to be issued some paperwork and ultimately you're going to be going to court for no insurance and driving whilst disqualified and breaching your bail conditions for that. What? Yeah. How's that <laughs> keeping you... Awesome. What? No way. No yeah. clean going. Uh, and this vehicle's been seized today. Why is it been seized? Because you ain't got a driving licence and can't drive and it's got no insurance. It, it, it's insured? It's not insured for your use. Turns out the van belongs to his mate. So he's insured to drive it, but you're not. No, it should be. It should have been swapped over. I'd quit while you're behind, mate. All right, you've told me that you took out a policy from Go Compare, yeah. all right, and now you're telling me it should have been swapped over. Yeah, it should have been swapped. Well, why would you have been going through Go Compare getting a policy if he swapped his insurance over to you? No, it's not. It's a different. going to be a different policy. OK, no worries. Either way, this vehicle's not going anywhere today. Jesus. Mm. He won't help you. <laughs> While the driver attends to his cargo, Phil digs into his outstanding taking without consent and dangerous driving charges, which involve an unknown vehicle. What's the job then with your dad? What's the job then with your dad? Job? Yeah. With dad? Yeah, you say you, you're caught for. What you done? Or what's, what you're alleged to have done? I've crashed the tractor. <laughs> yeah. What, deliberately? No. All right, why is, it, why is it dangerous driving, then? I don't know. This lot we're going through in court. All oh, right. And did your dad get injured, then? No. I like his belt. He going crazy. No one got injured. Yeah, weird. Uh, I'll take you taking some property with you. Armed with a loaded wheelchair, he rolls off into the afternoon. A real crackhead vibe, Previous really. offences of dangerous driving and taking a tractor without consent, Bandman got an eight-month suspended sentence and a three-year driving ban. After his run-in with Phil, he was further reported for driving whilst disqualified and driving without valid insurance. If he's any plans for the near future, they should probably be scrapped. See you later, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, I'm gone!